Hi everyone, this is Helen, your unit coordinator. I'm going to go through the assignment details for assignment 1A, which is our folio. And this folio is broken into two sections. So we're going to go through each of the sections and I'm going to show you where you can gain the information that will give you some help to construct your folio. So our first um, folio is based on the transcripts of Harper and Madison's writing. So make sure you've gone into those documents and you've had a look at those documents and you are very familiar with them. You don't need to include either of those documents within um, your assignment, but just they're, they're the narratives that we are basing the assignment on. So there are the examples and our first section, which is a thousand words. So using the text and comprehension text provided for Harper and Madison, you are required to, from the lists provided, sec select one area of need for Harper and Madison as the focus points for the requirements of this assignment. So here's Harper's areas of need. So you can choose either punctuation or spelling and Madison, either spelling or components of a written narrative. So it's up to you which ones you choose, but you must choose from these lists, but you only need to choose one area of need for each child. So for example, if you chose punctuation for Harper's area of need, what you'll need to do is you'll need to flip over to the e-text and you'll need to be in chapter 17. And this is all about our writing conventions. And you can see here in page 406, there is some information here in regards to punctuation. And it goes on to the next page. Now make sure that if you choose the area of need, that you are explaining the area of need. And you're also drawing some examples back from the writing samples that you have seen back here in these documents here. So depending on which area of need you choose, you need to make sure that you are certainly uh, giving some examples from those documents, but also giving some explanation about that area of need. If you chose spelling, you would go back into your e-text again. And in chapter 18, uh, here it is here, spelling and handwriting, lots of information here in regards to spelling, all about um, the, the types of spelling, um, and children's spelling development. So lots of information in regards to spelling there. So that's a really good chapter to have a look at. So that is for Harper. So you can either choose punctuation or spelling. And Mat Madison, you can choose spelling or you can choose components of narrative writing. So if you are going to choose components of narrative writing, then you would go back into your e-text and you'd go into chapter 16 and you would have a look here in writing purpose and text organization and you're going to be having a look at your writing purposes here so that's where you would be looking for that information really big tip here in regards to choosing your areas of need i would be choosing two different ones so try to choose um, either punctuation and components of writing or spelling and components of writing I wouldn't be choosing spelling for each. You can, but when you get um, into the depths of the assignment, you will find it to be a little bit trickier when you have to do some comparisons and find teaching strategies and talk about teaching methods. It be, will become very similar and it'll be difficult for you to draw out some conclusions from that. So that's just my hint for you. So that's our first section done. We have chosen our area of need, we've explained it, and we've given some examples from the student's writing. Then you need to select a teaching strategy that has been covered in the unit learning material and explain how that specific teaching strategy will support and extend each child's area of need in the written, in the written narrative, sorry. So again, we need to go over to our e-text. Our e-text, you can see, is very invaluable in um, this assignment. And here we've got in chapter 19, some key strategies for teaching writing. So you've got modeled writing, shared writing, working with text. Um, so that's a modeled and shared writing approach, interactive writing, learning experience approach, guided writing, independent writing. So there's lots of different teaching strategies there. Just make sure that you are linking back your teaching strategy to the area of need. That's really important that you do that. So lots of information in regards 
to that. Um, so make sure you have a really good look there in chapter 19. Remembering that you need to do a teaching strategy for each child and each child's area of need. So if you've decided on punctuation for Harper, then you need to talk about a teaching strategy in regards to teaching punctuation. And if you've chosen spelling for Madison, then you need to choose a teaching strategy um, for Madison. There's information in the Padlet in regards to some more um, expanded information on the teaching strategies, but just make sure that you are certainly referring it once again back, the teaching strategy to the area of need. That's really important that you do that. So once you've done that, you need to provide an example of a learning experience that is aligned to the teaching strategy that will support and extend the child's written narrative. So this will include a description of the teaching methods required for the learning experience, an explanation of how the learning experience will support the development of writing skills, and evaluation of how ICT can be incorporated into the learning experience to enhance literacy teaching. So there's a lot of information there. Remember that you've only got 500 words for Harper and Madison. You can use headings, and I would definitely recommend that you use headings for this. So what you would be doing here is you'd be having a look at teaching methods. Now I've put some teaching methods onto the Padlet. So you've got lots of information in regards to teaching methods there, but here's some here. So a teaching method that you might talk about is demonstrating. You might talk about modeling. You might talk about explaining. So these are quite teacher directed uh, uh, teaching strategies. You can also have other ones uh, like inquiry, explaining, uh, game-based, cooperative learning. So there's quite a lot of information um, on the Padlet in regards to the teaching methods. And again, just making sure that you are choosing two different teaching methods for Harper and Madison. That's really important that you do that. Um, and in our e-text as well, I'm fairly sure that there is some information in chapter 20 in regards to, here's some here, writing experiences and activities. So that's all our learning experiences that they talk about at the beginning. So you need to choose a learning experience. Um, now, when it comes to the learning experience, we're not looking for a great big lesson plan. We are looking for an overview of a learning experience. So that's really important. So a learning experience that is going to help the area of need that you have chosen up here. So you need to do a learning experience for Harper and a learning experience for Madison, incorporating in there a teaching method, that which is really important, your explanation and your ICT for each of the students. So just on the learning experience, like I said before, it is an overview. Um, and I explained in the rubric um, that it does say about learning experiences. What we're looking for is one learning experience. And obviously within that learning experience, there might be some small parts to that. So what, that's how it relates to the, um, to the rubric. So just remember that it's one overview of a learning experience, but make sure that you are linking it back always to the area of need that you have chosen. So you've chosen your learning experience, you've explained it, you've given an overview, you've talked, talked about the teaching methods that the teacher is going to use within that lesson. And then you're going to give an explanation of how the learning experience will support the development of writing skills. So in order to do that, you're actually going to need to use the curriculum. So you can either use the um, Australian curriculum, which hopefully you're all very familiar with, or we can also use our state's curriculum. So you can choose which one you use. You cannot use both. So you need to choose either the Australian curriculum, curriculum or your state's curriculum. So I'm just going to go into the Australian curriculum here. So here's our Australian curriculum and this is our English. And I've gone into year two because year two is the year level that both uh, Harper and Madison are at. Now just remember that because we are choosing at some areas of need, Harper and, and Madison don't necessarily have some learning problems or anything like that. We're just choosing some areas that we as a teacher can help to focus on. So if I've chosen a learning experience to do with spelling, here's a phonics and word knowledge descriptor here. So what I would do is I would choose one or two of those descriptors that might fit in with my learning experience. 
I would include the whole um, descriptor there as long along with the code as well that's really important that you include the code because then we know that you've actually looked it up and you are starting to gain that understanding of the curriculum so you might choose that um, maybe you're doing something to do with text structure and organization so that might be possibly your um, your area of need your components of a written narrative that you might have chosen there and so or you could have chosen punctuation there so there are your descriptors there again use your whole description descriptor plus the code so this is the australian curriculum i'm going to flick over to my state's curriculum which is wa which is a bit exciting and i've jumped to you too as well and i've had a look here in um i've got language literature and literacy and i'm having a look down and i'm seeing oh look text structure and organization and i'm choosing a couple of those out of there that might relate uh, very similar to the australian curriculum you can see and again whatever i choose i'm just making sure that i'm including the content descriptor plus the code there as well that's really important so that helps hopefully to explain this part of how you're going to use your learning experience to support the development of writing skills. Because remember, as teachers, we always need to be purposeful in our teaching. So we always need to make sure that we are linking our learning experiences back to our curriculum in order to show how we are achieving those outcomes in the curriculum. So hopefully that part is clear. The next part we will need to be doing is to doing about evaluation of an ICT can be incorporated into the learning experience. So this means that we need to look at ICT can be used within your learning experience. Don't choose a new learning experience. This is whole. This is the whole learning experience um, that you've chosen for Harper and for Madison. So remember, you've got two. Um, so how can you use ICT to enhance this? How can you make it better by using ICT? So there's lots of apps out there. There's lots of programs that you can be using. You don't have to use the e-text um, for this. If you don't want to, you can do your own research. But if you do choose to use the e-text on page 572, you have got some writing. There's some ICT uh, information there in, in how to uh, use some apps. There's heaps and heaps out there. You're probably um, more knowledgeable than what I am in regards to what's out there at the moment. Just remember, we're not looking for keyboarding skills or a word processing document or anything like that, because of course we are looking to enhance the literacy uh, teaching. So we're looking at how ICT can enhance it. What can we do maybe in a small group that's going to help spelling? What are we going to be able to do in a small group or with a class? Can we use the interactive whiteboard? Can we use a special app? Can that be part of your learning experience? Just make sure that you do explain what the uh, ICT does and how it's going to enhance your teaching. Um, and of course, always linking back to the area of need that you have chosen. So hopefully that explains that part. Remember, you're going to have to be very concise in your explanation here because you only have 500 words for each of your students. Um, so just make sure that you've done that. So once you've done all that, so make sure that you've done all of those uh, aspects for Harper and all of those aspects for Madison. So once you've done that you've given some examples as well which is really important which i've alluded to before always draw back to those um these uh transcripts here always go back and have a look and see what you can draw out and uh, use as an example to show that that's the area of need and that's why you're going to teach this and this is how it relates to curriculum it's really important that you do that section two is 500 words and this is what i've been alluding to um, before in regards to choosing two different areas of need because now you need to compare the teaching strategies that you've used in the previous section okay and then you need to discuss any benefits and limitations you have may, may have noticed about the two teaching strategies so this is 500 words here so don't go and make up a new teaching strategy okay that's not what we want to happen 
we want you to be using the teaching strategy that you selected here. So the one teaching strategy, so you might have um, chosen modelled writing for uh, Harper, and then you may have chosen shared writing for Madison. Uh, so those are the strategies that you need to use in this section too. So that's really important that you do that. So you're going to look at some comparisons and some limitations of those teaching strategies. You don't need to be putting your opinion in there. Remember, it's an academic writing. So you need to make sure that you're using your academic literature, um, but you're drawing off some uh, benefits. So you might have, say, um, modelled writing where it's very teacher directed. Um, you might have used a inquiry based teaching strategy. Um, no, that's a teaching method. Sorry, uh, not inquiry. I meant a, a shared reading um, uh, teaching strategy. And if you've done that, then you might think that that's more student directed. So just make sure that you've got the right teaching strategy. We're not using teaching methods, which I tried to confuse you with. Um, we're using teaching strategies, which is really important. And you have just teased that out in regards to some benefits and limitations of those two. You've got 500 words there. Just make sure that you're clear and concise there um, and making sure that we're not bringing in our opinion there. Just be aware of your format of your folio. So there's Times New Roman font set at 12, 1.5 line spacing. Um, make sure you can use headings, subheadings, uh, third person, and as one single word document. So that's really important. So I'm hoping that what I've gone through here will help you a little bit to find out where your information is. Um, please ask questions on the discussion board. We will have the live collaborate to help you out as well. I'm just going to flick over to my slideshow here where we talked about our teaching methods. Um, and there's, it's really important here that um, you look at writing in third person. So we're, we're, these are the aspects that we're looking at in regards to writing in third person. If you need an extension, please email your ELA. If you need longer than that, um, you can fill out an extension request form. Please ensure that you include supporting evidence there because um, we need medical evidence or evidence that you um, have come to some sort of misadventure. Um, and then we can uh, look at that to give you a further, further time if you need to. So if you need some help, we've of course got our ELA and your group can always help. So definitely post up your questions on the lounge. That's really important. We've got our student advisors. So they're um, more of our technical people that can help with enrollment details, academic skills. Um, they can also help with um, research, writing and referencing skills. They're pretty amazing, the student advisors, actually. They've got a lot of um, valuable um, knowledge. So make sure if you need to use them, you do. Student coaches are another amazing um, um, a resource that we ha have here at Swinburne Online. They can help you with uh, goal setting. They can help you with studying, t setting um, goals for yourself. So they're a really great service that um, you can utilize as well. The other great service that we've got is the Studiosity, which helps to give you feedback in regards to your writing and editing. So all the information in regards to Studiosity is on the portal. Um, and I would m probably make sure that I used Studiosity for this first assignment to give you some valuable feedback. That's um, probably my um, big hint. And I would actually use Studiosity all my way through just to check that I'm on the right tra track in regards to my academic writing and my editing. So that's um, a really big, um, important resource to be aware of. And please use them, but please make sure that they do get um, backlogged a bit when assignments are all due. So if you can get this one done a little bit earlier and, and submit it to Studiosity and then make the relevant changes that they recommend, then you'll be well on track to submit on time. That's really important. Now, late assessments. I need to bring this up because I need to let you know that you will be penalised for late assignments in this unit. So there's the percentage of um, marks that you will lose if your assignment is, uh, is late. My 
best advice is if you are having problems, if you're having difficulties, please contact your ELA, go through them, ask them some advice, ask them what they need, what you can do. Please don't leave it to the day before. Please don't leave it to the day that it is due. Um, we, we are here to help you, but this is now a second stage literacy unit. So we will be deducting late um, marks. So just be aware of that. Don't forget to join us for our live collaborate sessions. They're really informative. We've got some fantastic ELAs who are very insightful. So they will all be there to give you a hand. Remember to use your discussion boards really well in regards to engaging with the learning materials, in regards to asking questions. Remember your ELA's email is not for asking questions. The discussion board needs to be utilised for that so that we can all have a discussion and we can all be um, in, at our own insights in regards to the learning materials and the assignments. That's it for now. I hope this has been helpful. I really wish you well. I know you'll be fantastic and hopefully we will see you in the live collaborate session. Bye for now.